And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making potato leek soup. To serve alongside that, we're going to have a wonderful little green salad with a mustard vinaigrette, and we're going to have for dessert a little key lime tart. I love key lime. So we're gonna start out though with the soup. Now I've got a pot here, just about a six quart stock pot that I'm gonna get preheating over like medium, medium high heat. We're gonna talk, a we're gonna start with our leeks. Now, how many times have you seen this in the grocery store and you don't know what to do with it? Well, this is a leek. It is a member of the onion family, and it's delicious. It's a lot milder than a regular onion, and it's wonderful. Now, this part of it is, is kind of tough, the darker green part, so I really just kind of cut that away and discard that because it's really just not very, very good at all. And then sometimes the leeks can be dirty, but what I've already done is cut them in half and rinsed it underneath just some water, some cold water. But you can cut them and soak them if you want to. But just cut them in half and then just cut them in little pieces like what I'm doing. We're gonna actually saute these in the uh, stock pot. So let's get some oil. I'm just gonna use canola oil, a couple, I don't know, two, three tablespoons of, of oil. You want to saute these or soften them. We're not going to caramelize them or make them golden. But let's get that pot hot. Let's just go ahead and do another one. I love leeks and I, I use them in this particular soup quite often. And actually there's a wonderful little side dish braised leeks with oh, just like a cheese gratin type thing that's wonderful. But you can cut them like this and then soak them in some water if you want to, or you can do what I do and just cut them in half and rinse that part. And this one's bigger, so I'm gonna cut him again. And just rinse that underneath some uh, cold water because leeks do grow in sandy soil. This is a base for a wonderful leek potato soup. Now the French have a real fancy name for this called vichyssoise, vichyssoise, which is cold leek potato soup. I don't like it cold, I like it hot. So I'm gonna make it as a hot potato soup. But now it's a thinner consistency than what you may be used to with a potato soup. But it's delicious. And you can serve it cold if you want to on a summer day. But I, I just don't, I'm not a real big fan of the cold soups. I, I like my soup hot. But I make this year round. I don't make soups just when it's cold outside. I love soup. So I make it year round. And like I said, these are members of the onion family. Leeks are in there, but they're milder. So if you don't like the strong flavor of onion, uh, try the leek and see if you don't find you like that a little bit better. Let's add a little bit of salt to it because we want to bring it out. We're going to soften them. We're not browning them, we're not caramelizing them. We're just softening them. And of course, some freshly ground pepper. I love potato soup. Absolutely love it. Oftentimes, I make several versions of potato soup. I think we actually have done one before on this show. I make one version that has onion, regular onions and celery and potato in it. It's got a real creamy, uh, thicker consistency to it, love it. My mom makes really good potato soup. I've tried and tried and tried to make my soup, my regular potato soup like my mother, and I just can't do it. You know, and isn't that funny how you do things and you think you're doing it exactly the same way that your mom does, and it never tastes the same. So my mom makes great potato soup, I love her soup. We're gonna add about a teaspoon of dried thyme, and I'm gonna go ahead and add it at this stage. But you can do it a little later if you want. But I find that if you add it into the oils, a lot of times it, it brings out the uh, natural flavor 
of the spices and herbs. And often I do add them at the saute phase, especially in chilies and things like that, when you really want the flavor pronounced. Mmm. Smells so good. I'm gonna let those kind of soften up just a little bit. Now, let's talk about potatoes. I'm using today Yukon Gold Potatoes. If you haven't tried these, they're delicious. They are a, a, a little bit different than your regular red potato or your white uh, Idaho potato. They have a golden flesh. Where's my knife? And they are just delicious. They hold their shape and they're creamy. Let me show you the inside. You see how yellow it is inside? I just love them. And so for this soup, I'm using the Yukon Golds. You can find them now everywhere. And I'm leaving the peel on. If you, we just scrubbed them. Uh, if you don't like the peel on your potato, this is really a rustic soup. You can peel them if you want, but I tr truthfully, most of the vitamins and minerals in potatoes are located right under that skin. And it's extremely healthy just to leave the, the skin on. So if you wanna just scrub them like we did and leave the skin on, by all means, do that. You want them in about one inch pieces. You want about a pound and a half or two pounds of potatoes. You could use, you know, any kind of potato that you wanted in here. I just like the, I like the flavor of the Yukon. I like the texture of it. Now our leeks are sauteing, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the potatoes in as I cut them. Go ahead and get them in the pot. I'm gonna add some liquid. I'm using chicken broth today. Just store-bought, I like the low sodium. Uh, chicken broth. If you have homemade, this is the time to use it. But I don't. So I'm using store-bought chicken broth. I'm gonna add about six cups. That's about four, so I'm gonna add about half of this. I love these stocks in the cartons that you can buy now in the stores. Because if you don't need it all like that, just flip the top, put it in your fridge, and it's in there, and you can use it later, and it'll keep fresh in your refrigerator. And I think the flavor in the boxes tastes better. It doesn't taste tinny. You know, sometimes something packaged in a metal container can taste kind of tinny, you know, sort of metallic, but these don't. So you want about a pound and a half to two pounds or so of uh, Yukon Gold Potatoes for three good-sized leeks, like what I used. If you didn't want to use leeks, you could use regular onions, but try the leek. Uh, if you, if you, you know, any grocery store out there has them, but try the leeks if you uh, wish, because it really does add great flavor to the soup, and it's a milder, and that's what this is. It's leek potato soup, but if you wanted to make it onion potato soup, you could. You could just use a white onion or a yellow onion. I wouldn't use a, a red onion in this, but it's delicious. And the Yukon Golds make great mashed potatoes, by the way, if you... Uh, want to try them in mashed potatoes. And I read something the other day that said the Yukon Golds are a little bit lower in their starch content, which is better for diabetics. I'm doing some research on that kind of thing. Check it out before you take my word for it. But I did read it in an uh, article that the Yukon Golds are better for diabetics because of the lower starch. I think it has a little bit lower carbohydrate count, but check with your doctor first. But for you diabetics out there, it may be an alternative for you to try. We're going to take a quick break. I'm just going to keep chopping these potatoes, putting them in the soup. We're going to bring that up to a simmer. When I come back, we're going to make a wonderful little dessert. I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Chapter 23, verse 5 says, My cup runneth over the joyful life. Are you brimming over with happiness, with joy? Does your life 
speak, God, through your actions, through your words, through your deeds? Do you exude happiness wherever you go? You know, the Word tells us that our cup should runneth over with joy. What is joy? The joy of the Lord is our strength. True joy bubbles up from that inner spirit man that is in you. Allow God to make your cup so full of joy that it runneth over over with happiness in your everyday walk, in your everyday life. Your cup runneth over. away as you can see it's just we just added just a, about I don't know about two pounds of those potatoes now I leave the skin on mine so we've got our leeks I've got three good sized leeks in here and then about two pounds of Yukon gold potatoes that I left the skin on some thyme and some rosemary simmering away in some chicken stock I'm going to bring that to a boil and then I'm going to turn it down and let it just kind of simmer for just a few minutes now we're going to make dessert next. Key lime pie. How many of you like key lime pie? Mm, delicious. It's, you know, key limes. Let me explain real quick the difference. This is not a key lime. This is a regular lime because I couldn't find any key limes in my grocery store this morning. Key limes are about, this, about that size. They're about a fourth of the size of one of these regular limes, but we're gonna use the zest off of this. Key limes originated, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in Florida, in the Keys of Florida, and uh, they're, and they're just delicious. And we actually, I got to go with my sister and my niece to Key West, and uh, we had some key lime pie down there, and it was so good. And it's typical with a graham cracker crust, and you know, just lots of key lime juice, and, um, it just it, sweet and condensed milk. It couldn't be easier to make. We're going to make a little tartlet. Now, this is actually key lime juice. In your grocery store, in the baking section, over there where you get the flowers and the jellos and all that stuff, you will find bottles of key lime juice. They're tartar. It's a, just a, a different flavor than the juice of a regular lime. If you can't find key lime juice, and I, I have no problems finding it around here, but if you can't, you could substitute, you know, your... Um, regular lime juice, but you would need a little more. I'm using about half a cup. If you're using this, you would need about three-fourths of a cup. So I'm using about half a cup of just bottled key lime juice because I do not have the patience to sit with those little tiny little key limes <laughs> and zest them and juice them because they are tiny. They are little, little, little guys. Just stir that into, this is one can of sweetened condensed milk we all know where that's in the baking aisle. You'll find them right near each other at your local grocery store. Let me get a little whisk here and whisk that real quickly before I proceed on. Just kind of incorporate that key lime juice, if you will, into the sweetened condensed milk. And I could eat sweetened condensed milk straight out of the can. I love that stuff. It's rich, but oh, is it ever good. Then I'm gonna use the zest of my lime, just the zest off of one lime. Regular, you don't have to find the key limes. If you can find key limes, that's great. And occasionally I do see them, but not often. Key lime pie is really, really good. It's very rich though. And I saw this thing once and I wanna try it if I ever get an opportunity uh, where they take key lime pies, they cut them in wedges, they freeze them and then they dip them in chocolate. Chocolate covered key lime pie to me sounds just heavenly, but this is not gonna be chocolate covered, but you could grate chocolate over it if you want to. Add whatever you like, it's yours. You do what you want with it. Well, where's my little scooper? It would just use a knife. Add the zest to your filling. My soup is boiling away here. So let's turn him down. Just a little bit. 
We're gonna cook that just till those potatoes are tender. Takes about, I don't know, eight to 10 minutes or so. Whisk in your zest. Then I'm gonna add to that, where's my little, there it is, just some regular non-dairy whip topping that you buy in the grocery stores. About half of this container, it's an eight ounce container, so about six ounces of it. As much or as little as you want. We're just gonna gently kind of whisk that in. You could fold, matter of fact, I think I will fold it in. Do you know what I mean when I say fold, where you take your, a, 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 a utensil like this, a spoon or something, and you just kind of gently fold that in instead of beating it to death. You really are just kind of incorporating gently about halfway through and then fold it in. That's what, when you read a, a recipe that says fold it in, that's what it's referring to, is to just fold that in. Now, this needs to sit in your refrigerator for about two hours to kind of firm up and thicken up. But we're gonna pretend today that it sat in the refrigerator for two hours, because we're gonna put these in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. Now, you've seen me use these before. I love these little tart shells. These are found in your freezer department of your grocery store, and they're little mini phyllo dough, P-H-Y-L-L-O is how you pronounce it, and they're little tiny little phyllo dough shells. You see that? It's just a little tiny little tart shell. Perfect little one size bite. And they come frozen, all you have to do is thaw them. They're already baked and I love them. I use them a lot for so many different things because they're so handy. Here's how they come. This is the only brand I've ever found around here, but they're little phyllo dough shells. You can fill them with anything. We're using them with a sweet dessert today, but you could use them with uh, you know, a, a salad, like a crab salad or a shrimp salad, chicken salad. You could put any kind of pudding dessert type things, chocolate with strawberries, absolutely anything. I make all kinds of desserts with these little jewels. And this recipe makes about 24 of these, and I just leave them in the little shell thing that it comes in to make filling a little bit easier. And then you want to take just a spoonful in each one. Then we're going to pop them in the fridge. Great little make ahead. Wouldn't want to make it a day ahead, but you could make this for like up to two hours ahead of time. And just go ahead and put your filling in there and allow it to chill in the refrigerator in the shell. Would be perfectly fine for a party or, you know, a birthday or whatever, dessert, whatever you were making them for. I make these little bite-sized desserts all the time because I find that really helps with portion control. If you have just a little bite sometimes, you know, it's, it's enough to satisfy that sweet tooth without being too much. Now this recipe makes enough for 24 of these, or two packages. I think this package has 15, so it would make enough for 30, it would be plenty enough. Now let's take our other lime and we're gonna zest it, the other lime, a second lime. We're gonna zest because you wanna garnish it and you wanna let everybody know what that filling is. As it sits right there, you wouldn't know. You know, it's always a good idea to kind of show your guests what's, what they're getting ready to eat. So take just a little bit, always tap the back of your microplane because it does tend to stick and just put you just a little bit of the zest over each one and that way they look at it and they'll know that it's not lemon, that it is a lime flavored dessert and it adds extra little punch of the lime flavoring to it. Or you could, if you wanted to, to decorate it even further, you could take your lime and cut little tiny little wedges would be cute as could be, and just cut little, cut yourself a little slice, and cut it into quarters, and you could do that too. You could put a little quarter in there to show that it's lime, either way. And then put that in the refrigerator for a couple of hours to let it chill up. I'm gonna take a quick break. When I come back, we're gonna make a quick little salad, then we're gonna eat our delicious soup. I'll be right back with you in just a minute.
All right, now our wonderful little tarts are ready. Our soup is done. I'm gonna show you how to finish that, but let's make a little simple dressing for our salad because you know, you gotta have salad with soup. If you've watched this show, you know I am just a fan of just quick, easy, homemade dressings that you can whip up like that with things that you have in your pantry. Uh, just real easy. And I vary the theme on this lots of different ways. I love this little stone ground mustard that has the real coarse grain in it. I'm adding about a tablespoon of just the stone ground mustard seeds. To that, I'm going to add about... I don't know, three or four tablespoons of my favorite vinegar because I love the rice, the seasoned rice vinegar. You've seen me use that a thousand times on this show. Some salt and pepper, of course. Easy, easy, easy. I love little vinaigrette dressings, but you could use whatever kind of dressing that you, your family likes. My little boy Aaron likes ranch dressing. I like vinegary dressings, so that's what I'm making because he's not here today. I've got a lemon. I'm just gonna use a little bit of lemon juice because I like the flavor that it adds to the salad dressing. I'm doing it over a strainer because I don't wanna get the seeds in there. Just about half a lemon, which is about a tablespoon usually of dressing or of juice. I love lemon juice. Use lemon in a lot of different, whole lot of different things. Let's whisk that together. Just real easy like. And then add some extra virgin olive oil. As much or as little as you like. I tend to like my salad dressings a little tangier than most people. I don't add quite as much oil. I, I really like mine about half and half oil to vinegar. But, you know, if you don't like yours quite as tangy as I do mine, then, you know, just add, feel free to add as much or as little as you like in your dressing. You're making it in your home. You do what you want. Now, I just bought some of the, the organic little salad mix that I buy. I do tend to buy organic leaf lettuces more so. And you just need a little bit. You don't need a lot of this. Just a little bit of salad dressing goes a long way, in my opinion. And see that mustard just kind of make emulsifies it and makes it a wonderful little quick, easy dressing that you control the freshness and you're not dealing with preservatives or anything else in your salad that you don't want on there. And I do like a little extra black cracked, coarse cracked pepper on my salad. I get people, if I'm ever out at a restaurant and I have a salad, I literally take the top off of the pepper shaker, you know, the little pepper shakers. I take that screw top off and pour the pepper on mine. I had a waitress one time said, oh, did it fall off your salad? I was like, no, I really, truly do like that much pepper on my salad. I'm a big pepper eater. You put as much or as little as you like. And there's your wonderful little green salad. You could add some tomatoes or cucumbers. Whatever you wanted to yours would be fine. I just, I really just like lettuce in my salad. But if you want to add some vegetables of your choice, you feel free. Now, here's our soup. The potatoes are tender. As you can see, that pepper is about to make me sneeze. The potatoes are tender. Now, I told you, this is a thinner consistency than like a chowdery potato soup like you might be used to eating. To help thicken this up a little bit, we all have these buried in our utensil drawer. If you don't have one of these and you have on those little immersion blenders, use that. Use a spoon, whatever you have. This is a potato masher. Just take it and run it through. And what you're doing, as you can see, I'm really just kind of mashing those soft potatoes up in the soup. That gives it a little bit more body without using the flour and the butter and the roux. Although, listen, I, there's nothing wrong with that kind of potato soup, and I make that, but this is not what that is. This is a leek potato soup that is supposed to be a thinner consistency, and this works great. I did not peel my potatoes, remember? I just left the peeling on there because that's where a lot of your vitamins and minerals are. You can make it as chunky or as fine as you like. That is perfect for me. Let's grab a bowl, and I'll show you how I finish this. And see how it just kind of mashed up the potatoes into a little bit chunkier bites. Mmm. I love soup. 
absolutely love it. Could eat it any time of the day. Now, I like to add a little pat of butter on my soup because I like just a little, little bit of butter, about a tablespoon. You can leave that out if you don't want. And then just garnish it up a little bit with some chopped fresh flat leaf parsley and just a little bit extra pepper on top. And to me, that is the perfect, perfect little comfort in a bowl potato soup. Oh, could not be easier. So there we go. There's our delicious little meal. We've got these wonderful little key lime tarts that we made with bottled key lime juice, sweetened condensed milk, and then just some regular frozen non-dairy whipped topping. We mixed all that together with the zest of 